I mean, we've talked about Claire Foy's work before on things like Breathe and Unsane First Man, in which, you know, what she's really doing is, you know, deep character development. And it was interesting that when you started talking about those movies, there was a change in the tone of, you know, she was talking about having friends on those movies <clears throat> as opposed yeah, to... and I, as I mentioned, she reacted... I, I could see her go... Effusively, oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Because in, talk about that. Because in the case of uh, Girl in the Spider's Web, it's a different thing. It is something in which she is, you know, she is centrally carrying it. As she said, based on uh, David Lagerkrantz, I thought we said Lagerkrantz, but Lagerkrantz's novel, which is a continuation of the Stieg Larsson books. And essentially the story, which we had a little bit there, is that she has been... She is, is uh, called upon to steal the NSA's newly developed Firefall system, which is a program capable of accessing the world's nuclear codes. And the Blomfrit character is now very much in the background, very much secondary. It is absolutely her story. I mean, actually, Vicky Creeps is in the film as well, but that's a very, very small role. And um, Stephen Merchant is the Oppenheimer-like scientist who has invented this thing and then suddenly become appalled by what he has invented and realised that he, do, he can't control it. And there's a speech in which he does, he says, I think it's him, maybe it's another character. One of them says, it's basically something which is a, a, a way of tapping into all the nuclear codes of the world. It's something that immediately makes the owner a god. And he says, I need to get it back. And that's the sort of, that's the setup for it, which is a very kind of instantly Mission Impossible setup. So Claire Foy said in that interview, that this is definitely, you know, it's, it, it's an action thriller, which is a sort of shift generically, perhaps, from what some of the other films were. And um, I think that this this doesn't have the grit of the the, the original uh, European movies in which Numi Rapaz starred, and I thought she was really terrific. And it, it was, I mean, I remember the, when I saw the first Girl with Dragon to do, I think it's uh, how many years ago it was, which was the one that then won the BAFTA for Best Foreign Language Film. I mean, I remember thinking, wow, this is really tough. This is a really tough film. This visually, it's closer to David Fincher's American remake, which I was not such a big fan of at all. I, you know, I ended up comparing it to the, you know, to its European predecessor and worrying about the fact that it was it was much more stylish. And this this has that kind of mainstream gloss. It's also interesting that Claire Foy said in that interview that people have have, have tried to talk about Lisbeth Salander now as like a, almost a superhero character. She said she's not a superhero; she's conflicted. Well, that may be the case, but the film itself does have superhero inflections. I mean, at times, the mix of the matte black muscle cars and the great big tired motorbikes and the tired, as in tired, not yes, tired. big, big and tires. And over-designed costumes for standoffs between characters. It does take you into kind of Batman-y territory. And that kind of high-octane, high-gloss, the whole film's got that blue-grey, chilly sheen. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, there is a lot of surface in the film, and it's definitely something which is drawing on that iconography. Whether or not the Elizabeth Salander character is is more than that or different to that, that's the area that the film is is in. I think it suffers to some extent from some creaky dialogue, some cre creaky exposition. I think that speech that I was talking about just then, in which I, whichever character is says, you know, every, well, there, there would be a god. That felt like the kind of exposition that you would get in a kind of generic superhero film. But the thing that holds it together is that Claire Foy is surprisingly convincing, even when the movie itself literally waves credibility, you know, bye bye in the in the rear view mirror and heads off in search of, you know, mainstream thrills and spills. And I think what she manages to do is, and this is the thing that she's always done, she she manages to bring, you know, I hate this phrase, she brings a humanity to the role. She, you know, she makes you convinced enough that you're watching a person, an actual person, even when what's going on around this person is stuff that is, you know, that is the, the stuff of cinema, you know, big, high buildings, huge drops, snowy terrains, ridiculously high-speed chases, um, knowledge, of, knowledge of things that how could you possibly have known? I mean, a, a plot that really kind of defies the audience to go, really? You know, really? And what and she said in that interview, she talked about flexing a different muscle. And you think that's what she's done. She's gone in and she has flexed a different muscle. It's like seeing somebody going and saying, I wonder if I can do this. Because it's not something that I've seen her do before. And can she do it? Yeah, she can. She can do it, you know, with knobs on. She can do it really well. And she just about holds it together. Because the film itself is definitely going off in a different territory, which is much more towards all those things that I think she's not interested in, which is the superhero, you know, the high gloss, the sheen, the stuff, which it, which is Batman-y, whether, you know, whether the central character wants it to be or not. So I think she's really good 
in a film which is glossy and sheeny and surfacey and kind of, you know, not as, doesn't have the grit, doesn't have the, the underbelly that the others did. But it has her. Yes. And she's like the, the firefall thing. She's the secret weapon. And if you've got Claire Foy, it's okay, you could rule the world.